Hello, Internet. This is Whispering Whim, bringing you yet another grocery haul today <laughs> for my um, fellow U.S. people. I hope your spring is being more springy than mine. We, it is currently snowing outside. Um, I have not seen any daffodils or hyacinth or anything like that bloom yet. And I'm getting a little nervous that we're going to move straight from winter to summer. Because where I live, spring is usually really short anyways. You know, alpine deserts are kind of not known for their floral, you know, nice temperature range things. Um, but yeah, so if you have lots of flowers and beautiful greenery where you live, you know, for me, take an extra moment to appreciate it because I don't think we're going to get any of that around here um, this year. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the food, though. First up, I finally found a, a user, a user, who am I? One of my friends who comments, you know, one of my lovely listeners, uh, had mentioned that aside from the Welch's and the Gushers, there's another brand of juicy fruit snacks. And I have finally found it. Uh, I was not able to purchase a small package. <laughs> this one has 40 pouches inside, and it set me back about $14. Um, but I am excited to finally try it because, uh, my commenter had mentioned that they're even better than the other two brands that I'm familiar with. Um, and I only found this because I was doing a bit of a more in-depth grocery haul or grocery trip rather, um, at my super local store, the one that's closest to me. It's like within walking distance close, albeit it's, it's a bit of a walk, but it's walking distance. Um, I try not to shop there too much because they're very expensive, but once in a while they have these meat sales where you can get packages of meat for $5 if you buy five or more. Um, and I had run in there for a quick thing on Saturday. Um, I needed some bacon for breakfast the next morning. And I saw they were running one of the sales and I didn't really want to stop and like, you know, grocery shop for realsies, um, <laughs> right then and there. Um, so I double checked the sale dates and, um, went back out today and, um, yeah, their meat selection had been mostly cleared out. So I am sad that I just didn't buy the meat when I was in the store the first time around. But it really would have been hard to do a grocery haul. And it already kind of throws off my shopping to do those meat sales. So uh, this is what we got. <laughs> um, moving on. We have some cracked wheat sourdough bread. Um, I did, I was able to get a few things of meat. I just didn't get as much chicken or turkey as I was hoping for. Um, but anyways, with the steak that I got, I will be making steak sandwiches. That is my guy's like ultimate favorite. Well, might be his second favorite thing that I make. First being the, um, jalapeno bacon mac and cheese. <laughs> Speaking of jalapenos, this was an impulse buy. I don't need any bagels right now in my life, but um, the local store, the, the walking distance expensive one uh, called Save Mart, which you think you'd save money there, but you don't. Um, they make the most kick butt jalapeno cheddar bagels ever. Like, I'm sure they get them from some sort of, you know, at least the, the, the bagel rounds they probably get pre-made, but they're not afraid to throw a lot of cheese on there. It has a pleasant amount of spice. They're soft. They're just, mm, they are fabulous bagels. 
and they usually sell out pretty fast. So when I see a whole package of them and I'm in there, I kind of feel compelled to buy it, even though I really, I really don't need it because earlier I had gotten this on Friday. This is my Sam's Club bag. I'm just sneaking in early. Uh, I had gotten a 12 pack of English muffins for like $4. <laughs> Uh, and this is why I shop at Sam's Club sometimes. Um, so we have plenty of breakfast bread. But those jalapeno bagels, man. They freeze well, so I'll freeze, you know, at least half the package. And I will just be a happy camper once I toast them up and, and throw some cream cheese on there. <laughs> okay. Moving along. Finishing out that Save Mart bag. I have two cans of V8. Uh, it's kind of, it sounded really tasty, but I didn't want to commit to a giant container. So I just got two cans. We'll test myself out on that. <laughs> uh, me and V8, weird hit and miss kind of a thing. Sometimes I let it go to waste and sometimes I drink it really fast. Uh, because... I am a tomato fan, and today I've gotten some Wild Wonders Gourmet Melody. Melody? Mm, yeah, Melody. <laughs> Discover the world's flavors. It's kind of a bold statement for, you know, what is essentially a couple of colors of grape tomato, but, you know, I, I, will, I will discover the world's flavors a little bit. And then, this is my anger buy. <laughs> Not really anger buy, but um, so the meat sale that I mentioned was disappointing because they had already sold out of many of the cuts of meat I wanted to get in the sale. Um, but I, com I was pot committed, so I did my shopping anyways. And I was down in the cookie aisle, and these were supposed to be on sale. Two for five dollars. And they're normally like five fifty nine at the store. That's how expensive that store is. Um, and I did the self checkout, and when these rung up, it didn't apply the discount, and I couldn't find anybody to help me. I couldn't take them off myself because you still need someone to help you. So I ended up buying these for full price. <laughs> I am bitter about that. What I'm not bitter about is I have some cans of Swanson's beef broth. And it has to be Swanson's uh, because uh, with Easter just around the corner here, I have to think about what I'm bringing to the usual family potluck. And I really want to do brown rice again for my friends that... Um, you know, come chat with me in the, the kitchen often, they know that uh, brown rice is something my family makes when I grew up. Uh, that is the color of brown, but not actually made with brown rice. <laughs> uh, the beef broth ends up staining it. It's kind of like a poor man's risotto. And I absolutely love the stuff. It's very nostalgic for me. So I will be excited to make some of this on um, Sunday. It's this coming Sunday. Um, hopefully I get the video uploaded that that sounds relevant in enough time that it sounds relevant. All right, moving along. I got myself a carton of the red pepper and tomato soup. This is not a new thing. I've been favoring this soup quite a bit. For, you know, one that I don't make myself, it's very good. <laughs> All right. So, in my Sam's Club bag here, I got a few more goodies. First up is a hefty pineapple. And look at that. A good ripe pineapple will start to show yellow at the bottom. They always ripen from the bottom first. And I think this one is almost ready to cut into. I might give it another, eh, maybe another day or two, but that'll be, that'll be a tasty fruit for the lunches. Add some variety because my guy's been getting a lot of um, 
mandarin oranges and apples. You know, it's winter here. <laughs> Maybe forever winter here, but it's been winter. Um, which means, you know, the selection of fresh fruits and vegetables are not great and they're not as tasty. Um, you can find strawberries year round, but buying them in winter is kind of, you usually get some pretty bland strawberries is all I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, avocados have been like on fire lately though. This is probably like, I'm almost eating like, I don't know one and a half of these a month lately. I have really been enjoying avocados. It has really helped that I, like, I don't know why I didn't know this, like, automatically. But, so you set them out on the countertop to ripen. And then, once they're ripe, usually you only get, like, a day to eat them. You can throw them in the fridge once they're ripe. And... They keep in the fridge, chink, 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 chink. Uh, they keep in the fridge for like uh, two weeks, I think is the longest I've left one in the fridge after it got ripe. And they're fine. I was flabbergasted. That's actually a tip. I mean, maybe most people knew that already, but that was a tip I got on my honeymoon. We were chatting up some other people in Napa Valley and somehow we talked about avocados. <laughs> <laughs> I just assumed, you know, like some foods don't do well in the fridge. Like tomatoes, the fridge kills the flavor of tomatoes when you put it in the fridge. So I just thought avocado was one of those foods because I always see it in the grocery stores and at restaurants out. Um, but yeah, no, they're fine in the fridge. But wait until they're ripe first because they don't, they don't really progress much in there. Okay. Oddly enough, speaking of avocado, we have some avocado oil, which you already know is my preferred cooking oil. Uh, it is a little more neutral than olive oil. It has a very high flash point, so you can, you know, fry with it and do any reasonable temperature of cooking with it, really. Finishing out that bag, we have not one, but two jars. This was a combo pack of queen olives, the ones with pimiento in them. And uh, yeah, my guy is obsessed with those super dirty martinis. <laughs> and this was, I think it was $8 for a two pack. And the nice, decent olives that I can find in a regular grocery store, not Sam's Club. Uh, usually run about six dollars for one small jar so that was a very good purchase also on sale at Sam's Club nice whole case of green beans these are not my guys favorites but I love green beans I don't know why and this was on sale for like five dollars for the whole case and this is a good name brand green bean like I could get yucky yucky green beans for cheaper but I don't wanna <laughs> and then let's see here this ended up being kind of an odd purchase so I was at Save Mart and um their fruit selection was also a little underwhelming today on top of the meat selection I suspect all the snow we've been getting probably delayed some food trucks because I ran down to the even more expensive grocery store. Because there's two. The second one's not walking distance, but it's very close. Um, and it's more expensive. But it usually has wonderful produce. I love their produce. Um, and I ran down there to get some fruits and vegetables. And they were cleared out. So I think, I think it's just a truck thing. But so... I got my guy some fruit cups for his lunches. They're not his favorite, but I don't know. I feel bad when there's not some sort of fruit in there. He always gets fruits and vegetables in every lunch that I make him. And then finishing out the things that are already on the counter, we have another bottle of vermouth. I kind of, there's a uh, liquor store in town um, that's also far away from me. 
all the best stores are far away from me. I hate it. Um, but there's a liquor store in town called Total Wine and it has the best prices. So I kind of just went crazy and got a whole bunch of stuff because I hate driving out there. Um, so we've got a big old thing of vodka. The vermouth is for the dirty martinis. This is my guy's favorite um, whiskey currently. Uh, Jameson's Stout Edition. He likes sort of darker beverages. And then this was actually on sale at Sam's Club, not Total Wine. Um, and this is Jameson as well. It's the orange flavor. I had gotten him a bottle of this the first time I saw it at Sam's Club because it was only $20 or like $22, um, which is fairly cheap for this brand. Like this one, even at Total Wine is like $32. <laughs> and at the local grocery stores, it can run as high as $40 or the closer to me grocery stores. Anyways, I'd picked this up and he tried it, but it's like really sweet we're not big sweet people like we have the fruit snacks and the cookies but like we don't do like milkshakes often or you know we don't pig out on sweets so anyways we tried this and it was so sweet and then we usually keep our our liquor in the freezer because then it's already cold yay this stuff has so much sugar in it it froze now it's still 30 proof or 60 proof, 30% alcohol. So the fact that it could freeze, that's, that's wrong. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll try to wrap this up. So we had all of this um, sugary whiskey, right? And I'm like, okay, we do like to have dessert once in a while. Why don't we find a good like float type combination? And we tried out a couple of them and what we settled on is vanilla ice cream, about, you know, a shot and a half of this and Sprite. And it's fabulous. It's, it's almost like a creamsicle, but it's, it's got a more broad range of citrus flavors and it's really tasty. And my guy's like, yeah. I could get behind this and I thought oh well he really likes that and you know ice cream sundaes are something we can do a few times a month maybe so I bought an, this this bottle currently and he took one look at it and he's like why did you buy more of the yucky whiskey <laughs> I was like but you liked it as a dessert and he's like but did you buy all the stuff for making sundaes and at the time I hadn't, I still haven't <laughs> like, no, but you have to buy it when it's on sale and I'm there. I haven't done Winco yet. So that became a whole fiasco, but this will eventually get drunk. The, there's not too many, um, alcoholic beverages in my household that don't eventually get drunk. <laughs> Moving on to our cooler stuff. Um, out loose here, I have... A few of my Sam's Club finds. And this is a giant bag of Asagio Parmesan and Romano cheese. I wish they had a giant bag of just Parmesan. I like plain Parmesan a little bit better than the mix. But, um, you know, the price was right for it. We have some half and half here. And then... I got a bag of Brussels sprouts. It's a very crinkly bag. And at Sam's Club, this giant old bag is like $4. <laughs> I really, I love it when I get deals. The problem is, is you usually go in for the deals and then you buy things that aren't deals because you want, you know, a tub of peanut butter or something. <laughs> And then here is the meats that I did manage to get on the Save Mart sale. Um, if they had had more chicken or turkey, I would have bought a lot more meat. Um, but I got as much beef as I think my guy can handle. He's not uh, a red meat kind of a guy. Uh, but anyways, we've got some cube steak. 
The original price for this was $8.49, but I got it for $5. And then I got not one, but two packages of sirloin. This one was originally marked at $8.99, and this one was marked at $8.90. Also got them for $5 a piece. <laughs> and then... This is what I wish I could have gotten more of, but this was the last package of chicken breast in the sales section. So I'll just make do with the fact that I got the last one and, you know, be sad <laughs> a little bit. Uh, but anyway, so this was originally marked at $9.54, got it for $5. Now, granted, that is six forty nine dollars per pound, which is hecka expensive. Their original price is heck of expensive. It is decent chicken, but I can find um, chicken for cheaper, way cheaper, um, when I go to Winco. <laughs> and then my last meat product, because I had to buy five to get the sale... Uh, and there wasn't enough chicken, still better, uh, is just some good old ground pork. I don't know what I'll do with this, actually. I was just looking over the selection, and my guy likes pork, but I'm not a fan of pork chops. Uh, they had plenty of those. I didn't want them. And, like, they also had pork loin, um, and he likes that fine, and I'm, eh, on it, but they're, like, these big, long long pieces of loin that are marinated and it's way more than one dinner's worth and I don't like them as leftovers <laughs> and I'm the leftover eater in our household so I did not get those but maybe I'll make some meatballs with it um I did make my hummus or not my hummus the falafel right I talked about that last month with you I made the falafel and it was fabulous I really enjoyed it and now I want to try some more Mediterranean dishes that I'm not super familiar with um, so I think I think the next one I'm gonna do is oh gosh I'm gonna butcher this name like mamuska or something like that it's eggplant and meat and um, sometimes it's served with potatoes that's going to be next on my list, but um, the recommended meat for that is lamb. And my guy loves lamb. He likes gamier meats. Um, and there is no lamb within any of the stores I regularly shop at, especially ground lamb. Like, I think I've seen rack of lamb occasionally. Um, so to make that, I might sub in the pork and see how that goes. I might. Which is why I brought it up. But I might also just splurge and go down to the butcher. We have a butcher here in town that I hear is fabulous. Great cuts of meat. Problem is, is they're like <laughs> really, really expensive. Um, so I don't know. What do you guys think? I can't remember the name of the dish, but Mediterranean lamb is just a common thing. Should I splurge and get ground lamb? Or should I just try it out with beef or pork or something? You, you should let me know, because I'm, I'm debating this. In the meantime, I have lots of leafage here. This is Italian parsley on this bag, and this is cilantro in the other bag. I am not a big fan of cilantro and the falafel recipe that I used called for it. Um, sometimes I can handle a little bit of cilantro. So I, I put in extra parsley, but, and then just a tiny bit of the cilantro. And honestly, I couldn't taste that normal soapy taste I get when I eat the pure leaf like by itself. So... Next time I make falafel, I might get braver and add more. Because, oh, I am hands down going to make falafel again. 
Uh, we did pita wraps with it. And I made a tahini sauce. And um, my guy was a bit suspicious in the beginning, not because he loves Mediterranean food, but because I made the mistake of telling him it was a vegetarian meal. <laughs> He's like, oh, he has like a lot of people in their head that um, you need meat every day. You don't. Um, but once we ate it, he was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I could do that again. So I'm going to make falafel again and maybe again and again and again. We'll see. <laughs> um, in fact, oh, it's goodness, it's two o'clock already. I'm going to have to wrap this up. Um, I am actually going to make a mix just for my lunches. Uh, I was going to do that today. I've already soaked the beans. Hmm. <laughs> now, quandary. Uh, it's, it's a little late to start such a thing. Okay. Anyways, maybe make falafel, but right now do a video. Yes. Uh, here's some, uh, lettuce. This still has the root. This is butter lettuce. Um, and this is really good for wraps. I usually do, um, what is it? Not pad thai. Something Thai related. I'm blanking on the name right now. Oh goodness. Anyways, so I've, I've made a dish where, um, lettuce wrap type dish with Thai food. It has, a, oh, it has something in it. Anyways. And so I like the whole lettuce wrap concept. So when I make my next batch of falafel, the lunch version, or my guy's not around, I'm going to put them in lettuce wraps and try that out. Because the pita was great, but I limit how much bread I have in a day. So, you know, it kind of eats up all my bread. <laughs> and I'd rather save it for breakfast. Because obviously I love bagels and, and stuff. Okay. Moving on, because now that I'm talking about making lunch, I am very hungry. Uh, we have some green onion or spring onion, depending on your locale. And that is for my brown rice. We have a pepper, and I forget what kind of pepper this is again. That's for the um, falafel. Yummy, yummy falafel. And then we got a green bell pepper, and that's for the cheesecake, cheesesteak sandwiches. We got some butter. The um, recipe my mom gave me for brown rice. It's here. Let me, let me grab it out here. It has a ridiculous amount of butter in it. Half a pound. <laughs> Half a pound of butter for two cups of dry rice. <laughs> no wonder I like it, right? It's the most unhealthy thing I could probably eat in a day. <laughs> okay. Provolone. That's for our steak sandwiches yet again. And then some good old pepper jack cheese. Um, my guy is run out of cheese sticks. And I just couldn't bring myself to pay the um, Save Mart price for cheese sticks. So I think I'll just put some pepper jack cheese in his lunches until I end up going to Winco. Because I'm going to have to break down and get there at some point. Because this was way more expensive than it should have been. All because I wanted to save some money on some meat. And I didn't even get all the meats I wanted. There's a moral somewhere in that story. <laughs> now then, uh, that is all the food. And my original plan, because I kind of had a feeling this video would be a bit on the short side. Um, I did not, I tried not to go too crazy buying food at Save Mart because it's just so, so much more expensive there. Um, and my plan had been... And I'm sorry I can't do this, but my plan had been to make falafel on camera and, and stretch out the video that way. I did not realize how quickly the day was going by, though. And trying to film cooking 
takes like three times longer than just cooking. <laughs> so we're going to pad out this video with these little ASMR toys instead. I still have some. I bought a whole bunch a long time ago. And I was going to make like subscriber thank you videos with them. And, you know, I just never find the time. <laughs> um, and my, my channel doesn't grow that fast anyways. But they are around. And so I can use them as filler. If, you, if this is a new concept to you, they make these sort of mystery pack toys that have like layers of packaging that have different sounds and textures and they're for people who like noise ASMR uh, they're marketed for people although I would imagine that like if you're really into this sort of thing you've probably seen the same toy and packaging so many times that this can't be like a top grossing toy for them we have some plastic stuff. They make sure to add cardboard because people love the sound of cardboard. And then we have the little descriptor, or not the descriptor, the taunter, I like to call it, of all the different options for the uh, oddly satisfying, create unique, soothing sounds and effects and ASMR expression. <laughs> Uh, but there's a whole bunch, and I never seem to get the cool ones. I just get the same boring ones over and over again, I think. And today we have the Domino. So it makes a very loud clicky noise. And that's about it. Disappointing. Now you can see why these don't warrant their own video anymore I just don't think they're all that good although the ones that are in the egg shape I find are typically better than the bar ones so let's hope this one's better and I'll I'll simmer down and stop talking so you can hear it I wonder if the plastic has gotten old. These are a lot harder to um, nicely tear, as they once were. Oof, come to me. There we are. <laughs> it is kind of fun, the different preparations like this one winds this way where it's the other plastic wound uh, wound around the other way <laughs> let's have a nice tube to them and I think these the egg shaped ones also win because they come with crepe paper which I kind of like that sound. And let's see here, where'd that go? Here's our little potential toy booklet. I can get it unfolded. Where is it folded at? There we go. And it looks like today we have Groovies. Oh, it's just literally a screw. Although, I can get behind fidgeting with that. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> so, there's our filler for today. Yay! And so now we're at the end of the video. And of course, I've got to do my shout outs. Um, let's see here. We've got 
lots of regulars. Should I try to find the non-regulars or just shout out to everybody? And we'll shout out to like almost everybody. Uh, Evelyn Lopez, Dulce Crystal, Diana, Katie Bertola, Max, New Day, Lacey, and Hot Sauce 188. Uh, thank you guys for commenting and keeping me motivated to do these. And I will see you all next month, if not sooner. Probably not until next month. <laughs> um, but until then, I hope you have a wonderful spring and that tonight you sleep well. Nighty night.